Hi guys, and thanks for joining. It's Brandon Ayers from the Cornea Service at Wills Eye Hospital and Ophthalmic Partners of Pennsylvania. Today I wanted to talk about corneal tissue addition for keratoconus, or CTAC. Keratoconus is a relatively common corneal dystrophy that we see in our office, and for years we've been offering patients corneal transplants if they were contact lens intolerant. Now luckily, several years ago, we were also able to add collagen cross-linking to stop patients from progressing and having worsening of their keratoconus. So there's a lot of patients out there who luckily are not progressing. They're not really ready for a full corneal transplant, but they'd like to do something to see if they can lessen the severity of their keratoconus. Well, that's where CTAC comes into play. This is a fantastic procedure really thought up by Dr. Stephen Greenstein and Peter Hirsch up in North Jersey, and they're assisted by the technology available at Corneagen. So I'd love to show you what this process looks like from looking at the surgical plan to the femtosecond laser all the way into the operating room and placing the insert. Let's take a look. This is the surgical plan sent by Corneagen and is designed using Pentacam data. It shows where the CTAC segment is going to sit in the cornea and where the femtosecond channels need to be created, slightly decentered from the pupil center. So I used a slit lamp to look at the center of the pupil and then little sizing markers to mark a little bit inferior here, two millimeters inferior and 2.09 millimeters temporal to the visual axis of the pupil center. Again, that's all based on this surgical map. We'll then take a little sizing ring, a little inked marker, and we're gonna mark that center. And this is what we're going to align under the femtosecond laser. So here we are in our laser room and we're just talking to the patient using a little verbal anesthesia. And we're going to dock the laser on the cornea, trying this time to center over basically on the pupil. Now in this case, we're using the LensX laser to create the lamellar channels. And to my knowledge, this is the first time that the LensX has been used for this application and it worked beautifully. And I really do have to thank Alcon for coming in the day before and working with me with the laser to make sure that this would work. Now here you can see we're beginning to create the lamellar channel, again all based on the surgical map sent to us by Corneagen. All in all it took somewhere around 24 to 25 seconds to make the channels and the little incision to gain access to those channels, very similar to how we used to do intacts. So now we go into the operating room. This is the little CTAC segment. This is a processed piece of cornea. There is no antigenic material on this. It is essentially a femtosecond laser cut corneal insert that's then irradiated and packaged in albumin. And I can tell you, it is almost impossible to see the CTEC segment in this albumin. So we're going to pour it out into a little strainer. You can see there, it's not really straining very quickly. So we'll take a Wexel sponge and see if we can find the segment. Now, what I've been told is it's so hard to see. You don't want to throw anything away till you can confirm that the segment is present and you've got it on a Wexel. So there it is. We'll put it back in our little strainer. Then we'll put some BSS on there just to rinse off some of the, uh, some of the albumin. Now let's take a look at the cornea. We made these channels in the laser room and here we're just using a little spatula to start opening the channels. Now the instrument here is relatively straight so we can't get all the way around that curved channel. We're going to go each direction. Uh, here the incision is nasal so I'm going to go a little bit supratemporal and then infratemporal with those channels trying to get them to open as much as I can. And now we're going to basically resurrect an instrument from back in the Intax days, back when we did Intax manually, and use the channel dissector. Now luckily we don't need to use the vacuum ring, just a little corkscrew dissectors to go into that channel and make sure that it's opened up all the way. Now unlike an Intax segment where you could actually push the intact segment into the channel and it'll both dissect and open the channel as well as go into the cornea. With the CTAC segment, it's corneal tissue, so there's not much rigidity. So we need to make sure these channels are opened up as much as we can using the, the dissector. So we'll go one direction and then we'll take that one out and we'll get the second channel dissector and we'll go the other direction. Again, just making sure that the channels are opened as much as possible. And here you can see we're switching to the other uh, the clockwise channel dissector and we'll go in and just make sure that channel is all the way open. Now the channel is wider than the dissector so I'm kind of wiggling to make sure I've got the entire channel opened. Once I'm fairly convinced it's open we'll get rid of the channel dissectors and we will bring the CTAC segment onto the surgical field. So here it comes. We'll place that on the cornea and we're just going to gently dry it. 
Now we have to tuck this little noodle of a corneal segment into that channel and that's not all that easy as it's not rigid at all. So we're going to use two atraumatic forceps, one to somewhat open the, the incision in the cornea and the other to gently introduce the CTAC segment into the pocket. Now you got to be careful because as you push the CTAC segment in, when you retract the forcep, it naturally wants to come back out. So we're using two forceps, one to advance and then the other one to hold to slowly stuff this CTAC segment into the channel. And then we'll use a tire or a curve forcep to stroke the CTAC segment, helping it to open up into the channel. And this is the first time that I've done this procedure, so I wasn't sure how difficult it would be to convince that CTAC segment to go all the way around the channel. It wasn't as difficult as I thought, but at the same time, it wasn't that easy. Here you can see that the segment is getting compressed in the channel, and just taking that dissector and putting a little pressure on it allows it to open. Now I suppose if it had gotten stuck or I couldn't get it all the way in the channel, we could have cut the CTAC segment into two pieces and put one in clockwise and one counterclockwise. But here you can see we've got that segment all the way in and I'm just confirming that it's in the right location, matching it to the map sent by Corneogen. Now this is a little device that's specially made for CTAC to go into the channel and gently convince the CTAC segment to advance along the channel. And then we'll use a little Kiro ball. This is something very similar to what we used to use in LASIK, but a little bit larger, just to iron out the CTAC segment, once again, convincing it to go all the way around the CTAC channels created by the femtosecond laser. All in all, this entire procedure probably took somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. It really wasn't all that long, and we did it under topical anesthesia. This is a much more comfortable and much safer procedure than any open sky procedure that I've ever done. We're going to use this little smoothing device to just make sure we've put that CTAC insert right where it belongs. And I'll show you the overlay of the surgical plan to show that this segment is exactly where we want it to be. I can't believe how quick this surgery was, how comfortable it was for the patient, and what a fantastic use of technology. Now all there is to do is put some drops on the eye and a bandage contact lens, and this surgery is essentially finished. So once again, guys, I'm Brandon Ayers from the Corning Service at Will's Eye and Ophthalmic Partners of Pennsylvania. I hope you found this video interesting and you can apply it to your own patients. Thanks for watching.